top story involves breaking news on the Allied humanitarian aid effort in Berlin. That's right. Food, medicine, coal, and other essentials are now on the way to West Berlin. For more, for some more background information on the blockade and cause of this situation, we go to Alan in the newsroom. Oh, sorry, Mr. President. I have news. Thanks, guys. As you know, after World War II, the Allies divided and defeated Germany into four zones. Berlin, the German capital city, was located deep in the Soviet zone, but was also divided into four sections. In June 1948, the Russians, who wanted Berlin for all for themselves, closed all highways, railroads, and canals from western-occupied Germany into western-occupied Berlin. This, they believed, would make it possible for the people who lived there to get good food or any other supplies would eventually drive Britain, France, and the U.S. out of the city for good. Back to you guys. Thanks, Alan. As we speak, humanitarian aid is being dropped on Berlin. Let's go live to our special correspondent, Peter, who is standing by live in West Berlin. Thanks, Ricky Bobby. Instead of retreating from West Berlin, the U.S. and its allies have decided to supply the sectors in the city from the end. This effort is called Berlin. Hungry, sick, and cold families are getting the supplies they need to survive. Back to you guys. Thanks, Peter. It is clear that the Soviet blockade of West Berlin has failed. After 11 months and 2 million tons of supplies, the Soviets have now lifted the blockade. This is a win for the Allied nations, but a signal to the rest of the world that the chilly relationship between the two great superpowers is not going to improve for some time. That's all we have for you. I'm Zer Humphreys, and this is... Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Signing off. Thanks. Good morning. Welcome to Channel 2 News. I'm Riley. And I'm Cassidy. Breaking news. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, who were convicted of conspiring to pass U.S. atomic secrets to the Soviets, are set to be executed at any moment at Sing Sing Prison in New York. Both have refused to admit any wrongdoing and have proclaimed their innocence at this point. The Rosenbergs will be the first U.S. citizens to be convicted and executed for espionage during peacetime. We go live to Kylie in New York. Thank you guys. I'm here at Sing Sing Prison as the Rosenbergs are set to be executed. We will stay here live until the execution is complete. Ethel and Julius Rosenberg, you've been sentenced to death by electrocution by a jury of your peers. Do you have any last words? We are American citizens and we are innocent. Power up. Sing Sing Prison, I'm Kylie McDonald, Channel 2 News. Back to you. Thanks. With the death of the Rosenbergs, we can now reflect on the legacy they leave behind. Some people believe that the Rosenbergs were the victims of a surge of hysterical anti-communist feeling in the United States and protested that the death sentence handed down was cruel and unusual punishment. Many Americans, however, believe that the Rosenbergs had been dealt with justly. For more on this, we go to our special correspondent who is live at the White House with President Eisenhower. I'm here with President Eisenhower. Mr. President, you decided not to pardon the Rosenbergs. Why? I can only say that by immeasurably increasing the chances of atomic war, the Rosenbergs may have condemned to death tens of millions of innocent people all over the world. The execution of two human beings is a grave matter, but even graver is the thought of the millions of dead whose deaths may be directly attributed to what these spies could have done. Thank you. I'm Mackenzie Monty with Channel 2 News. Back to you. Thanks, Mackenzie. And from all of us at Channel 2 News, thanks for stopping by. And remember, if you're red, you're dead. Good afternoon, and welcome to Channel 6 News. I'm Felipe. And I'm Sarah. We have breaking news about a possible invasion of Cuba by the United States. As you know, tensions are high with Cuba, a Soviet satellite nation in our hemisphere. For more on what we know about this invasion of Cuba, we go to the newsroom to John, who is standing by with more information. Thanks guys, we are getting word that as far back as two years ago, officials at the U.S. State Department and the CIA have been attempting to eliminate Castro. Apparently, Kennedy had inherited Eisenhower's CIA campaign to train and equip a guerrilla army of Cuban exiles. CIA officers told the president that they could keep U.S. involvement in the invasion a secret and, if all went according to plan, the campaign would spark an anti-Castro rebellion on the island. Thanks, and back to you guys. Thank you, John. We're getting word that these Cuban exiles have landed on the south coast of Cuba at the Bay of Pigs. We now go live to our special correspondent, Marilyn, who is standing by in Cuba at the Bay of Pigs. Hi, 
Thank you for that stunning report. The results of the fail attack are in. 114 U.S. supported exiles are dead. And over 1,100 are now prisoners. This mission is a horrible disaster and a black eye for the Kennedy administration. From all of us here at Channel 6 News, I'm Sarah. And I'm Ben. You better go grab a coat. Because it's a cold war. Good morning and welcome to Channel 7 News. I'm Katie Cox. And I'm Amy Schmitz. Today's top story comes from Berlin as the 30-year-old symbol of the Cold War, the Berlin Wall, is about to be de deconstructed. For more on the history of the wall, we go to the newsroom to Tyler and Alex. Thanks, guys. The Berlin Wall is built a physical division between West Berlin and East Germany from 1961 to 1989 and the symbolic boundary between democracy and communism during the Cold War. Recently, however, tensions have relaxed on both sides. Detente, the de-escalating process, and two new changes, perestroika, meaning restructuring, and glasnost, meaning openness, have been U.S.-approved changes that have resulted in more free enterprise and free speech. And back to the anchor. Thanks, guys. We now go live to Berlin as President Reagan is set to make a speech. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs> what a shocking event in history. From all of us here at Channel 7, have a good night and a coffee tomorrow.